Hello friends, welcome to Perf Metrics, the core performance testing YouTube channel. In the previous videos, I have covered some basic topics of performance testing like user load, think time, throughput, 90th percentile, etc. Hope you would have gone through those videos. If not, then you can get the link in the description section of this video. Continue with the performance testing basics. In this video, I'll explain the importance of standard deviation in performance testing. So let's begin. Many performance testers don't know the importance of standard deviation in performance testing and hence give less attention to it. Standard deviation is a key matrix in performance test result analysis, which is related to the stability of the application. The calculation of the standard deviation is a bit complex and the probability of making the mistake with the larger number of data is high. Also, it is very difficult and time consuming to calculate the standard deviation for a large number of data set. That is why various analysis tools calculate standard deviation and give a summary so that you can make a decision on how the application will behave in real time. If we look at the definition of standard deviation, then it states that standard deviation is a measure of the amount of variation or dispersion of the set of values from its mean. You can see the given figure. A set of values are plotted on this graph and the middle dotted line denotes the mean of the values. The sigma sign represents the value of the deviation from its mean. Now understand the term standard deviation in performance testing term. In performance testing, standard deviation is used for response time. Hence, the definition becomes the standard deviation is a measure of how much response time of a particular request or transaction is dispersed from the mean of set of response time. It could be difficult to understand the standard devi deviation from its definition. So later we will take an example to get a practical understanding on standard deviation. Before that, I'll give an important tip related to the response time standard deviation value. The tip is that the smaller the standard deviation, the more consistent the response time, which increases the probability of consistency of an application or a system. Now let's try to understand the standard deviation by a simple example. Please have a look at the table. Here you can see the result of a test which has three transactions that is login, search and logout. The test was executed for five iterations and you can see that the iteration wise response time of each transaction are in second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth column. The seventh column has average response time, eighth column has 90th percentile values and ninth column has standard deviation values for each transaction. If you can see the table, then you will find that the averages for all the transactions are same. Here, you cannot say the test results are good or bad on the basis of average response time because averages are considered useless in performance testing. Why? I'll answer it later. Before that, check the 90th percentile. You will find that the 90th percentile of such transaction is better than the other two. But you can see that the third iteration of such transaction has 15 second response time. It is true that we do consider percentile value as an important metric, but not alone. Why? Again, I will park this question as of now and will answer it later. Now check the standard deviation column. The logo transaction has the lowest standard deviation that is 0.7. It shows the response time of logout transaction has less deviation than other two transactions. On the other hand, login and search transactions have the standard deviation value 2 
and 5.7 respectively. Hence, logo transaction is more consistent than other two. And if you can see the response time values of logo transactions, which are 5, 5, 6, 4, 5, you can say that the deviation is very less. Now, let's check the question which we have parked. The first question was why average response time is not considered in performance testing. After looking this table, if I ask which transaction perform well, then what would be your answer? All? But that is not true because login and search transaction touch the peak value 8 and 15 seconds respectively, which are too high. So, we can conclude that average response time cannot say that the system is or the application is consistent or not. The second question was why 90th percentile alone cannot be considered to prove the consistency of the system. So if you look at the search transaction, then it has the lowest 90th percentile but highest standard deviation. It means that such transactions performance is good but not consistent. For consistency of the transaction, you need to consider the standard deviation as well. Now let's see what is the formula of standard deviation. Standard deviation seems very complex after looking at its formula and method of calculation. The value of standard deviation is equal to the square root of the numerator which is the sum of square deviation of each individual response time from their mean value divided by the number of iterations minus 1 where mu represents the arithmetic mean of the response time of a particular transaction or request which is equal to the sum of all the response time values belong to a particular transaction or request divided by the number of iterations. Here, n represents the number of iterations. Now, let's try to understand the calculation by an example. It is travel to explain how standard deviation is calculated because as a performance tester, you will be looking for a tool that calculates quick and correct standard deviation and save your time. Still, if you want to know the magic behind standard deviation calculation, then refer to these steps. Step 1. Calculate the mean, that is the simple average of the numbers. Step 2. Calculate variance. And step 3. Find the square root. Let's try to understand the steps of calculating the standard deviation by an example. I have considered a set of values and the values are 3, 2, 15, 1 and 4. The first step says to find the arithmetic mean of the given set of values. Arithmetic mean is the simple average. So I'll sum up all the values and divide by the number of values. So here the mean value is 5. In the second step I need to find out the variance. So first I need to subtract each value from mean and then square the result. If you can see in the example, the first value is 3 which needs to be subtracted from 5 and result is minus 2. That needs to be squared and answer is 4. Apply this calculation to all the values. Now sum up all the results and divide by number of values minus 1. In this example, I got 32.5 as a result, which is a variance. Now, find out the square root of the variance. And as a part of third step, if we find out the square root of 32.5, then the answer is 5.7. Hence, 5.7 is the standard deviation of the given set of values. 
Standard deviation plays an important role in performance testing, which helps to understand the consistency of the response time. So next time, whenever you analyze the test result, then consider the standard deviation value of the response time too. Hope you got detailed information about standard deviation which is used in the performance testing. I'll cover more performance testing topics in the coming videos. Till that, stay connected with Perf Metrics, the core performance testing YouTube channel.